Hi everyone, Neil Malik from Knack Training bringing you another everyday office video. Today's video is about being able to highlight dynamically part of a line chart or an area chart. So to give you an example here, as you can see, what I've done is for the Asian values, I have highlighted whatever is the biggest week in terms of expenses. You can see that one little point right there. And you can do this manually, but unfortunately when you switch from, let's say Asia to South America, for example, and the highest value for South America is this week here at the end, uh, there's nothing you can do to make that happen. So let's switch back to North America here. You can see that's this week. So what we're doing is being able to dynamically highlight part of the chart as opposed to uh, just highlighting one specific element by going in manually and doing it uh, in a hard-coded way. So let's see how that would work. So as you can see here, I've got a tab called Area Example. If you want to download a copy of the spreadsheet, just follow the link in the description to our blog post, and you'll see you'll be able to download the entire file and, and see how it works. Okay, so right here you can see that I have, uh, based off of dates, every two weeks, uh, what the sales of that two-week period happen to be. And they're actually dynamic, uh, so I'm just going to go ahead and recalculate, and you can see those numbers just fluctuate so that we can get different types of charts. And of course, we could click onto this, go to the Insert tab, and decide to insert either a, a line chart or an area chart, whatever, you know, whatever works. So let's go area chart here, because the previous example is an area chart. And now what I always do here is clean this up, take off some of the extraneous stuff. So I don't really need to say sales up there. I don't need it to say the different dates down here. I don't need it to have those numbers over there. And if I click on the background or the chart, I can use the keyboard shortcut control one. So there is no fill and no line around that chart. And we're doing good for the first step of the process. Now the point of this is that anytime we want to dynamically highlight part of a chart, we always need to uh, create some sort of additional data set for the thing that we need to highlight. So over here in the D column, I'm going to make a new column called Highlight, pretty straightforward. And I'm going to make sure it looks good. And now the question is very simply, what is it that I want to highlight? So you have to come up with a function for the thing that is useful for you to highlight. In my case, I just want to highlight the moment, the point that is the highest value. So to make that happen, I do a little if function, equal sign if, and I test whether the sales for this week are the biggest sales of the entire year. So if this sales number is equal to the max of all the sales numbers. So I'll go C5, Control-Shift-Down arrow to highlight all the way down to the bottom, and then F4 in order to lock that into an absolute reference. So if C5 is equal to the maximum value between C5 and C57, then what? Well, at that point, I needed to output the actual number. So output cell C5. So that's what we do if it's the thing that we need to highlight. If, if we have made up some sort of decision, some sort of logical test, uh, and it fits the criteria, then we output the number. And if it's not, then here's what we do when it comes to line charts and area charts. If you were to output a zero instead for not highlighting it, Unfortunately, with line charts and area charts, you'd have a line down at zero. And so it wouldn't really not exist and it would kind of get in the way. To make something not exist in a line chart or an area chart, what we need to use is the NA function. The NA function's job, just NA, open parentheses, close parentheses, is to output the NA error message. Then we close the parentheses. And watch as I uh, autofill this all the way down and, oops, all the way down. There we go. So as you can see, in this particular instance, let's go ahead and format this as number value. In this particular instance, the top value is the biggest value, right? So the chart starts at the top and it goes down from there. But if I go to the formulas tab and I calculate now, you can see that now the biggest value comes in June and all the rest of them are NAs, except for that one value that is $904,397. Okay, 
So now what we do is we highlight all the values that we have over here. Just to click on the first one, control shift down arrow to select the entirety of that column and control C to copy. So we've copied the values, which really is just a whole bunch of NAs and then one value that represents the thing we want to highlight. We click onto the chart and just use control V to paste. And you can see here what I was talking about earlier. Um, when everything else is a zero effectively, you get this spike right there to go all the way up to the value and then all the way back down from the value. So we need to fix this. Here's how we fix it. The first thing we do is we go up to the design tab at the top of the screen and click on the select data button. Because in select data, if you click on hidden and empty cells, you'll notice that our specific instance right here is where NA is in one of these cells. And we're telling it, yeah, okay, NA is an empty cell, definitely. And when we have an empty cell, do we want it to be the same thing as a zero? No, see, that's what I was talking about before. If it's a zero, that's how we get the spike that we can see it go all the way up to the top and all the way back down. If it's an NA, I just want it to be a gap. Just literally don't show this thing. Pretend it doesn't exist. And then hit OK. And click OK. And you can see there the spike goes away. So that's the first step of this. The second step is to click on Change Chart Type right up here at the top. And to click on this Combo Chart Type so that our sales can continue to be the same area chart that we had before. But Series 2, which are the highlighted values right there, uh, that would be just a line chart, or perhaps a line chart with markers on it. I'll go line chart and click OK. OK, so it's there, but we can't see it. To make ourselves able to see it, what we need to do is go to the Format tab, go to this drop-down menu here and say, yeah, I need to format this thing called Series 2. So click on Series 2 and it says, okay, uh, well, what do you want to do? And if it's not opening up this panel on the right, make sure you hit Control-1 to open the panel up. What I need is a nice big marker. So I click on Marker and then click on Marker Options. And say, yeah, there, is, there are some built-in markers, I bet, that would work really nicely here. And on this drop-down menu, I'll go here to this one that's a circle. That seems like a good option. And maybe I make it a bit bigger. And maybe I fill it not with blue because blue kind of blends in. You notice here I got this nice deep red color. That'll really pop. And then maybe on the drop down menu here for the outline, maybe I'll go like a real white outline and sort of bump that up in size. There we go. Okay, so now we've got that nice red dot highlighting where the peak of our chart is. And let's just see whether it works or not. I'll go here to my um, Formulas tab at the top of the screen, click on Calculate Now, and you see that right there? Now the maximum value is the first value. Click on Calculate Now, now the maximum value is here towards the end. It keeps on chasing this thing around. Okay, so our last item here is to get our data label to show up on that point right there. Um, so we go ahead and uh, choose the drop-down menu, select Series 2, which is, of course, the second data series that has that one point on it. Go up here to the Design tab, click on Add Chart Element, and make sure to add a data label. Maybe uh, above makes sense, right? And so there it is. There's one data label because it's a data label on the Highlight column. And you see here, this is why we made the hi Highlight column the way we did all of these NAs until the moment when we actually needed that value to show up.